Which players have we drafted most? Find out next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Friday, March 22nd. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White, and we're just going to rattle some names off, go back and forth. Scott, you are up, a player you are drafting a lot. I'll start with the three players who are on five of the 11 teams I've built so far. No others are on more than three, but these three are on five. Vinny P, Vinny Pasquantino is one of them. He goes about 75 picks later than he did last year. Disappointing year, I understand, but I think, you know, first 38 games before the shoulder troubles kicked in, he was exactly who he wanted to be. And I find that I'm passing up Tristan Casas as much as I like him. Because I think the similarly capable Vinny Pasquantino is available 75 picks late. It's just hard to justify taking Casas knowing how I can get Pasquantino where I can. All right, for me, the pitcher that I've been drafting most, Logan Webb. I have him on six teams, so I really need Logan Webb to come through. Last year, through 216 innings, he led all starting pitchers in innings. And uh, typically, I like to draft him as a, a higher floor guy uh, to build that innings base, and then I'll target starting pitchers with uh, higher strikeout rates to complement him, guys like Freddie Peralta, or if I can get a, a Tarek Skubal or a Cole Reagan, someone like that. But Logan Webb is the pitcher that I've been drafting most in the fourth or fifth round range, using him as that base, and then moving on from there. Scott, back to you. Alex Bregman as my third baseman of choice, my number one priority in points leagues, uh, because I, I I don't think Rafael Devers and Austin Riley are well suited for that format. They're kind of overvalued in that format, but Bregman's perfectly suited for that format. He's just as good as them. He's available a round or two later. That's always plan A for me in points leagues. Plan B, by the way, is Max Muncy, but I usually get Bregman. And also in Roto Leagues, I, I like, you know, Bregman goes more round seven and round eight there, and his run in RBI production is hard to find at that point in the draft. That's really stud hitter's domain. And so I think Bregman's a handy player for the cost in that format as well. Seiya Suzuki is the hitter that I've drafted most. I have him on five of 11 teams that I've drafted so far. And we've seen flashes from Seiya Suzuki. He's yet to put it together over the course of a full season. The final two months last year, he hit around 350, 11 home runs. The barrel rate was awesome. He's got good plate discipline. He's fast enough to steal bases. Their new manager, Craig Council, already came out and said Seiya Suzuki will bat second in the Cubs lineup. So there will be lots of plate appearances and uh, lots of opportunities for power and speed this season. Scott, back to you. All right, the third player I have five shares of is Kodai Senga, who I realize is hurt, has a shoulder issue, and that's why I've been drafting so much of him. Can get him around pick 200. He's actually just been cleared medically to start throwing again. I'm hopeful I can get three quarters of a season of number two type production from Kodai Senga. It'd be a great bang for the buck pick if that's the case. The next pitcher that I have on, uh, I believe, four teams is Aaron Savali, who came over to the Tampa Bay Rays last year, and they gave up a good amount to get him. Uh, Kyle Manzardo, they traded over to Cleveland in exchange for Savali, and uh, I know the numbers weren't great once he joined Tampa Bay, but you look under the hood, the strikeout rate actually jumped up a lot, and I think Aaron Savali is a really similar pitcher to Zach Eflin, who just had a breakout season with Tampa Bay last year. So he's got that big curveball. He has a cutter, uh, solid control. Again, very similar pitch to Zach Eflin. I think the Rays will be able to do something similar here with Aaron Savali. Scott, back to you. Jose Altuve, I place a high priority on getting one of the stud third base or second baseman in round three. Altuve, Ozzy Albies, Marcus Simeon. And I think I'm one of the few who ranks Altuve the highest of those three, both for points and Roto. Uh, and so that's why I keep ending up with them. Shota Imanaga is a pitcher that, that I've also been drafting a lot. If you look at last year's World Baseball Classic, Shota Imanaga actually led the entire thing in Stuff Plus last year, uh, even higher than Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Not that we think uh, Imanaga is going to be better than him, but he throws from the left-hand side. He has this fastball he throws at the top of the zone. Doesn't throw it particularly hard in the low 90s, but it's a deceptive fastball. He's got a really good splitter and sweeper as well. I think he might be prone to giving up some home runs this year, but it's going to be a lower whip, and I think there's going to be lots of strikeouts here from Shota Imanaga. Scott, give me one more. I'll rattle off a few names real quick, if that's okay. Yep. Mike Trout, I think there's been an overcorrection for the injury history. Love taking him in round four, given the scarcity of high-end outfielders. Uh, Justin Steele, 
nobody's drafting him like the Cy Young contender he was last year. I think he's a poor man's Max Fried and a great rotation stabilizer as your number three. Evan Carter, people kind of down on him, but he's going to bat high in the Rangers lineup, get on base a lot probably as much as he walks. A lot of runs, a lot of RBI. Maybe Christian Yelich like in the other categories. I think Chris Bassett is another out, out uh, undervalued rotation stabilizer, kind of like Justin Steele. And Jackson Holiday. Even though he's the consensus number one prospect, he's not getting nearly the hype Jackson Chorio or Wyatt Langford are. Uh, I don't know that he's quite as developed in terms of power as those two, but when your pedigree is as good as that, you can make progress very quickly. And just the way the shortstop position breaks down, you know, once Stansby Swanson's gone, not a lot I feel confident in anyway. So Jackson Holiday is usually the direction I go. Scott, I am wearing this Phillies jersey for a reason. The early round player I have the most this year is Bryce Harper. Please just let that back be okay. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we will be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. 